Hi and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about another RTX 4090, this time made by Inno3D. It's the iChill Frostbite. As you can see, it comes pre-installed with a custom water block that's made by AlphaCool. That means we're going to check out power target, power consumption, temperatures, obviously performance clocks. And also what I'm quite interested in, it came bundled with a three pin adapter, which actually means that it should only be able to deliver 450 watt. But I'm not sure if this was just for the sample. We will find it out. Hetzner is a leading hosting provider and data center operator in Europe with hundreds of thousands of servers in operation. By combining its strengths in innovative technology, attractive prices and expert customer service, Hetzner expanded its marketing both within and outside Europe. They operate their very own high-tech data centers in Nuremberg and Falkenstein, both located in Germany and in Helsinki, Finland. Hetzner not only provides high-performing cloud servers at an affordable price, but also incredibly powerful dedicated servers capable of handling any project. Aside from these products, you can also get high-quality storage products and a variety of other services. Click on the link below to dive into Hetzner's portfolio. Before we get to the testing, just a quick first impression of the Frostbite. It's equipped with a cooler made by AlphaCool. As I pointed out before, it's made out of nickel plated copper, just the standard what we have in the water cooling industry. If we follow the water cooling channel, we have the intake right here. The water will enter this like microfin structure, go to the side. The left channel will go over, I assume like VRM or memory and then go all the way to the right and then exit on here. The terminal could be interesting. At least Inno3D is putting some like marketing on these screws. They are patented by AlphaCool, basically just because they have this like additional O-ring sitting on the bottom, which is sealing the screw to the bottom acrylic part right here. And I think probably, I mean, AlphaCool has to be a fan of this. That's why they probably made these kind of screws. And I guess Inno 3D as well, because it allows that you don't see any screw head from the from the side. And if that's something that's important to you, then this could be a feature just visually that might be important for you. Otherwise, design wise, if you would do a water block, you can also use the normal screws and just have a bit of the acrylic outer part sitting a little bit deeper and then it would be pretty much the same result. But first look. The quality should be quite good. We have an LED strip in the bottom that doesn't look so nice from the bottom, but that's also the side you're never going to see. So I guess this doesn't matter. It will just shine all the way in your face. Probably if you see the card in a normal orientation mounted in your case, we have an aluminum backplate on the back side. This could be either a print or laser engravement. And then we have also the Alpha Cool logo on here. I'm not going to disassemble the cooler for now. We will do that later, but I quickly want to test the performance, temperatures and everything first. I quickly want to talk about a few things that I noticed. Just visually, the card is absolutely stunning, absolutely beautiful with the RGB lighting and everything. Total approval. I just noticed that with the water flow, I'm not quite sure, especially if you pay attention to the left part, zoomed a little bit in there and you can see the total left there's almost no water flowing through there. And I'm not sure if like this area would have to be a little bit more narrow to like force more water to go this route, or if the entire like right row should be more narrow because it seems like a lot of the water is just exiting right through here. That's something I noticed. I'm not sure if it will have any kind of like a negative impact on the cooling performance, but it just looks like it's a little bit, yeah a low amount of water that's dripping through there. Just pump speed wise though, it should be enough because it's a D5 that it's sitting underneath the table that's powering the Mora. And this is pretty much running at like 100% fan speed. So just from the pump, it should actually be sufficient. And we can also see that there's definitely some water flowing through there. So that, that should be fine. We now used Times by Extreme GT1 in a loop testing for about 20 minutes to get an impression of how the card performs temperature-wise, performance-wise, clocks, power target. And these results look pretty awesome. Just starting with the GPU temperature, you can see over the entire time, 
And that may also depend or it will depend on your radiator surface. We all the time have a temperature on the GPU of about 46 degrees Celsius. Definitely a great result temperature wise. That also explains why the card is constantly like completely stable boosting at 2835 megahertz. Also power draw, it's always pulling about 400 watts. And if we look at the power consumption in percent, that equals about 90%, which then means that the default power target is 450 watt on the card. I also placed the temperature sensor on the back of the card to check the backplate temperature. It's definitely warm, but it's far away from being hot. I'm measuring the area behind the power stages in this case. There is an interesting thing if we open up the MSI Afterburner, it could open up any kind of OC tool, it's not related to Inno3D. But if we check out the power limit, we cannot pull this higher than 100%. The power limit configuration is quite interesting. It also explains why they only bundle it with a 16 pin to three times eight pin adapter instead of going to the four times eight pin adapter. I plugged the full 600 watt cable to it, but it does not unlock the power target. It's also difficult to find reliable information on it but I found a press release that it's stating that it's always only with 450 watt max. I'm not sure yet. I did not decide if I think this is an issue or not. Firstly, I think it's fine if a vendor decides that the card should not exceed a certain power draw. For example, if the cooler is not well enough designed or if it's like a smaller size, smaller surface area. But for this one equipped with a custom water block, doesn't really make much sense because this is like the perfect condition for overclocking. The temperature is pretty low. You're hitting about 46 degrees Celsius, which is definitely also related to using the Mora underneath the table. But still, the GPU is running so cold that it definitely has some room for overclocking left. And we also saw that in times by extreme GT1 loop test, the card is typically clocking at 2835 megahertz and only drawing like 400 to 410 watts. So even without having additional power limit left, you can probably still get a few megahertz out of it because there is still like 40 watt left for headroom power draw wise. So I don't think it's really an issue on this card that it does not allow to be like, I don't know, clocked higher. But at the same time, it's, it's pretty strange that you do like a custom water cooled card that is brutal by nature, according to the marketing. And then you lock the power target. That is, that's quite obscure. But also looking into gaming benchmarks, which we'll do in a second, you will see that the power target is probably not an issue. And also what kind of benefit you get by running a card like this custom water cooled. Because obviously a lower GPU temperature will also decrease the power consumption and allows for higher boost at the same power draw. And that's what we can see in some of these benches. Some comments stated recently that people want to see more attention towards coil wine on these GPUs. Generally speaking, the IGL Frostbite seems to be very good in terms of coil wine, even if it's a water cooled card. I'm just going to point my microphone towards the cooler so you get an impression. I'm right now in the PUBG lobby, which is definitely causing very high frame rates and thus the coil wine should be at a maximum level. In times by extreme GT1, the Inno3D iChill Frostbite can achieve a slightly higher performance than the NVIDIA Founders Edition. That is caused by the better cooling, which thus causes a higher boost clock and then results in about 2.5 FPS more. But due to the lower power target, there is no way that you can compete with a highly overclocked Gigabyte Hours Master or Asus Strix card with high OC. Performing a quick test on the Inno3D card, I could achieve clocks between 3045 to 3070 megahertz. The clocks are not as stable as stock and that's caused because the card is running into the power limit of 450 watt. In PUBG, the Inno3D 4090 iChill Frostbite achieves 481 FPS on average and thus beats the Founders Edition by about 2%. And due to the better cooling, as I mentioned before, the power consumption is slightly lower than on the Founders Edition and we can see 412 watt on average. We can see a very similar picture in Battlefield 2042 in 4K resolution. The power consumption decreases by about 2% to 318 watt while the performance 
performance increases also by about 2% to 133 on average. We just saw a 2% decrease in power consumption and 2% increase in performance, but it's a very low figure and at the same time we were only comparing like two individual GPUs, which is something you technically should not do because we don't know if just my Founders Edition GPU, like the individual GPU is slightly worse than this one. And in the end, just judging like the PCB quality and like the, the, the cooler, what it adds to the card, eventually it could just be exactly the same because 2% is pretty much nothing. It's definitely not noticeable. Now I will quickly disassemble the card, probably starting with the backplate and then just want to see like how is the thermal paste and like the pad alignment and everything. There are definitely some very, very fat thermal pads on the backside. We can also see a cutout in the center in the GPU area, which is probably because we have some capacitors in the center, like four of these bigger ones. And I assume they just wanted to stick to the same thermal pad thickness all over the card. We can see some are also still stuck on the backplate. And I guess they just made it easier for themselves. Technically, you could probably improve this by making some cutouts on the backplate in some areas of like the screws and also of some of the caps to make it sit closer to the card to use thinner pads. But also looking at the temperatures which we saw under load, I'm not sure if that's really necessary. If it helps by like, I don't know, like 0.2 degrees Celsius, I think it's just fine. Quality-wise, I think Alpha Cool did a good job on the water block. We can see some milling grooves on the back, but that's just a visual thing. Because if I just go over there with my fingernail, I cannot really feel anything. So I think it's just a visual thing that you can see some of it. But overall, I think Alpha Cool did a pretty good job designing and manufacturing this block. Looking at a PCB, we can see that Inno 3D went with the reference PCB. Not to confuse with the Founders Edition, because Nvidia is doing the Founders Edition, but at the same time also the reference PCB, just to give some basic guideline to the manufacturers, like Asus, Inno 3D, whoever. And then they can decide if they just use this as a base, if they improve it further, or just stick to this. Inno 3D decided they just stick to the reference PCB and I think you could theoretically talk about like, I don't know, power stages, some quality of the power stages, how many amps they are rated on or whatever. But from just what we saw, temperature clockwise, almost no coil wine, I think that just gives a better picture practically and at least I'm quite satisfied with what I've seen. Time for a conclusion about the Inno 3D iChill Frostbite. I'm still wondering why they're calling it bite like with an I instead of a Y would actually be funnier. Maybe almost as funny as the quote out of their press release that states, we are brutal by nature in everything we do and are 201% committed to you for the best gaming experience in the world. So they are 201% committed to a 100% power target. Not sure. And also this card is anything but brutal. This is pretty much the opposite, like their statement out of their press release is pretty much the opposite as what we have on the table. To me, it's a very tame card, has no coil wine, has very low temperatures, it's a short card, has no increased power targets or what's brutal about this. But I also think it's fine because if that's what you're looking for, because it's a tinier 4090 and it comes with a water block equipped that from my perspective has a good quality, then that's definitely going to be a good choice. That's why I think this marketing statement just makes no sense whatsoever. And I'm still not sure about the power target overall, if it's fine to leave it locked to 450 watt, because even if the PCB might not have the highest rated components, like the highest rated power stages or whatever, due to the fact that we are running this custom block water cooled, I think a higher power target would be fine for these components anyway. That's something I don't really get. But then at the same time, because it's custom water cooled, you will have a lower power consumption by default, which allows to clock higher and therefore it might probably not even be needed for most of the people. I think 99.9% .9 of the people probably are not going to care about it anyway. I guess it's fine. And if you're looking for a 4090 that's a bit shorter, comes with a custom water block pre-installed, then it's definitely a good option to consider. Pricing wise, not sure, but that will also highly depend on the region you're living in. So much about this video. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.